Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Dr. Jill Live. I'm here with Jody Cohen, uh, a friend that we have, we were just talking about where we've crossed paths before different conferences and different holistic gatherings. Um, but this is maybe one of the longest conversations we've been able to have and so excited today to learn more from her. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for solutions that are more gentle. And I know probably many of you out there listening are actually more experts than me in essential oils. And today we have a guest um, who's definitely an expert. Um, Jody is the founder of Vibrant Blue Oils. And I'm gonna just pick her brain and learn along with you about some of the great oil blends that she's created and some of the uses that we can do. Um, just a little background, uh, you can find all of my episodes on my YouTube channel. We are uh, actually at number 99, so soon to be 100. And then I know, right? <laughs> Crazy. Um, and then um, you can find us also on anywhere you listen to podcasts. So Amazon, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever, I'm sorry, YouTube and iTunes, et cetera. Um, all of those places, I think we're on like 15 platforms. So you can listen to all these in your car, on your walk. Um, please do, if you go to iTunes and give us a rating, that would be so helpful to get us out there. And then if you want to find more information, I love writing and there's tons and tons of free content over the last decade on my website. And you can find Find that at jillcarnahan.com. You can find all our products and services at drjillhealth.com. And if you look below, wherever you're listening to this um, or on YouTube, we will be sure and include the links for Vibrant Blue Oils as well. So if you're interested in checking those out. So Jody, it is so awesome to have you here. Thank you for taking the time uh, oh to my God, join me. Always great to connect with you. Yeah, and I love your decor. It's the beautiful blue, that cobalt blue that's in the, the oil, the bottles. I like, that's one of the things I love. Yeah, you did a really good job of just choosing and marketing. And um, I want to know your story, but I have a quick question for you. Um, why Vibrant Blue Oils? What's the what's behind the name? How did that come about? It's funny, my, my mom loved antique stores and she kind of convinced my sister and I to spend more time in them by getting us to collect things. Ah. My sister picked thimbles and I picked blue bottles like those old blue glass. Yeah, yeah. I always loved, I'd keep them on the windowsill. I loved when the light would shine through. I brought them with me, you know, to college and my whole post-college life. And um, when oils were first introduced to me, they came in these blue bottles. And I was like, oh, isn't that interesting? Like it, it got my attention. Wow. Yeah. And that was kind of how I started it. And then um, for me, you know, I, I had basically been, you know, I was an athlete and I thought I was eating healthy. And then my second kid um, was a lot harder to wrangle than my first one. And it turned out it was certain foods really changed his personality. And once I figured that out, I really went deep down the rabbit hole because uh, I didn't really discover that until he was three. And the years of kind of trial and error, had, I, I couldn't believe it was just food. Yeah, and yeah. so um, I went back and got a degree in nutrition, was trying to help other moms, you know, but kids are wiggly and they were hard to assess. So I, I live in Seattle near best year. I took a muscle testing class, which I really used as a shortcut to help figure out what's the root cause and what remedy is going to support it. And then my own life kind of fell into disarray. My uh, husband, um, I, I knew he was depressed, but he started getting more depressed than I felt like I could support. And so we moved him to a residential treatment facility. And once I knew he was safe and it wasn't my job to keep him alive. Uh, my adrenals ran out of gas uh, quickly. Did the tank. Oh, that's so a fight or flight. So you were kind of going, I see that so often, Jody, where people just go, go, go. And when the pressure's there and we need to show up for family, friends or loved ones or for work, we can like sustain this crazy level, right? And then all of a sudden that like, you know, something happens. Sometimes it's even the death of a loved one where we've been carrying the caregivers out there know how this goes. You've been caring for a loved one for years and years and years. And then all of a sudden your body's like, oh, I can rest. And I'm sorry to hear that, but obviously it led you to a great place with learning. Um, so what happened after that? Tell me more about the. Yeah, I mean, our kids were five and seven. And truthfully, I had really been single parenting since they were born. But then he was my other child. And once I, I knew he was, you know, going to be OK, I could barely get out of bed. I would wake up with the kids, make them breakfast, pack their lunch, drive them to school, come home, crawl back into bed and set the alarm for pickup. Oh. And nothing, you know, like, you know, with kids, like laundry, yeah. cooking, cleaning, all of that stuff just felt like 
so much. And I knew nutrition. I knew it was my adrenals. I was taking every adaptogenic herb I could think of, every, you know, glandular, and nothing was really helping. Um, and fortunately, I had been that go, go, go class parent, overachiever. Mm -hmm. And I had helped a friend with a fundraiser who had actually bought me a big box. She was into oil. So she came over with this huge box, you know, and, and after this happened, she said, you know, you have been so high cortisol for so long, which means, you know, high inflammation. I bet your gut is so inflamed that nothing you're ingesting is actually getting into your system. You know, try these, you can smell them, you can put them on your skin yeah. and, you know, desperation is the mother of invention. I basically was like, I'll try anything. Muscle tested the box. Will anything in here help my adrenals? Got very strong, yes. But then I couldn't narrow it down. I kept getting the same five oils, which confused me until it occurred to me, oh, wait a minute, they're liquid. I can combine them. Yeah. So then I started, okay, seven drops of this, five of this. I was brand new to oils. I blended them in a shot glass and put them on my adrenal glands, on my low, ba low back. And um, I pretty quickly was like, oh, wait, I could go running. You know, and for the last two weeks, like climbing the stairs felt like a lot. I'm like, I'm going to just go with it. Yeah. And I just kept putting it on and, and kind of kept feeling like myself. And um, that night I was lying in bed. I got the kids to sleep. And, you know, it's so common that when you have uh, adrenal function and exhaustion during the day, of course, you can't fall asleep at night. You have insomnia on the yeah. other side. Mm -hmm. And I, I had remembered, I knew of a kind of GABA remedy that you could put above the ears. And I thought, well, I wonder if I could apply an oil blend, you know, above the ears for the pineal gland. So I made something up, put it on. Don't even remember falling asleep. Just remember my five-year-old jumping on the bed and waking yeah. me up. And I thought, okay, that's a win. Oh, that worked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I just kept kind of, you know, when you're in practice for long enough, you start to see the blind spots. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard to help people drop into the parasympathetic branch of the nervous system. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to move lymph. There were certain blind spots that I always struggled with. And so I had this idea, well, let's just see what I can make up. So I just yeah. kept making things up and feeling better. And wow. when I got to the point where I, I started to feel like myself, my friends wanted to try it. It was working for them. They kept saying, you should do something with this. Yeah. And I thought, well, gosh, someone you know clearly must be doing something with this. So I went online and no one was really looking at oil blends like through the lens of balancing the nervous system and the brain and organs in the body. And they also, I realized, I was almost grateful that my mental capacity was not what it normally is because when I started researching, I realized if I had gone there first, I would have felt completely underqualified and probably wouldn't have done it. Yeah. I love that, Jody, And that's one of the things I loved when I went, went to your website after you've shared, you know, we, again, we've been in the same circles and then I was like, oh, you're doing oils. And my perspective is this, what I find for myself and a lot of patients and probably similar to you, I can take the big guns, like, you know, huge remedies and huge uh, supplements that are, you know, 20 ingredients and super strong. What I've learned over time is that my body as a HSP, highly sensitive person, if any of you out there know what that means, <laughs> um, you can read Elaine Aaron's book and probably both of us are a little bit that way. We're those canaries in the world. So we're going to be more environmentally chemical sensitive. We're going to be more sensitive to stress and cortisol effects all of these things, even emotions for empaths, right? And those people like you and I that are in that realm and then working hard and pushing in that, um, we actually do better with remedies that are more gentle, right? I used to do, I remember when I first did mold detox, I did binders and all these things and I completely crashed and burned. I like trashed my system. And I love that you're talking about like lymphatics and we'll talk about histamine and some of these little links that are difficult to overcome. And for many of the patients, the tinctures and the things or the herbs that we use are actually too strong. So this is one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on and talk about essential oils. Cause I feel like they're very gentle, but powerful, right? Like the cool thing is they're gentle for those people who are sensitive, but you can, and I know there's ways to do internal, but we're talking mostly topical application, right? And you're, you yeah, know. I, I actually find topical, especially, you know, it, it's funny, people don't realize this. People think it has to get into the, the bloodstream to be effective. Yeah. So like, oh, if I put it on my wrist, then it has to go to mm -hmm. the veins, to the heart, to the whole body. You can use topical on acupuncture points. Mm -hmm. And that, wow. is, that is another very gentle, but it, basically it's gentle and driving towards alignment. It's not yeah. too hard, too fast. Yeah. And again, some of us like myself over time, I've learned to do a lot better. Now I noticed you mentioned muscle testing and what I find is um, for patients, whether it's intuition, muscle testing, or some of these ways that are energetically finding what's right, 
Um, even though like, of course, that's not taught in traditional allopathic medical school, but there's a power to that. And this is where when I'm with, whether it's myself learning, okay, what feels like the right thing for me or checking in with patients, there's such a power because there could be a one size fits all adrenal remedy. And for nine of the 10 patients, it's too strong, too weak, the wrong thing. And I loved the beginning of your story because it was a very, very intuitive way to say these five herbs feel like the right thing for me. And then of course it was. And again, I think with oils, it's a much more, um, when we go into these realms that are not only, um, external, but, um, energetic number one, like I said, they're powerful. And number two, they're very gentle. And then number three, we can often feel what is helping us and what is not versus just the one size fits all kind of thing. Right. Exactly. So I love how you've done that work. Um, we talked briefly before coming on and there was three big areas that I think our listeners would love to hear about. One is about stress, parasympathetic adrenals. So we'll go into that first. After that, I'd like to talk about um, histamine and some of the issues with mold and Lyme and these cases where people have mast cell activation and histamine. And that's a particularly good population because that population has a trouble with things like tinctures and oral stuff. So this is a great remedy for them. And you can talk about some of the blends that you have. And then um, sleep is a big one too. You yeah. mentioned sleep briefly and adrenals. And before we jump into the parasympathetic adrenals, just for those of you listening, I'm going to give you just a one minute lecture on adrenals. So you know, if this is you, so adrenal glands sit on top of our kidneys, there's these little diamond shaped organs and they are stress response organs and they help buffer us for, from the environment. So often what happens is if we have stress or we're taking care of a loved one, or we have work hours or children or these things, they mount the response and give us that cortisol and allow us to get through the day. They produce norepinephrine, which is a direct. Uh, noradrenaline and then uh, epinephrine, which is adrenaline. And they also produce cortisol. Cortisol is our buffer from environmental toxins and allergens. So if we have no cortisol, number one, it's hard to get out of bed, like you explained, but it can also be um, more allergies, more histamine response, more asthma. So the lower the cortisol, you also have more environmental reactivity because cortisol is that buffer. So symptoms you might have, if you have adrenal issues, hard time getting up in the morning, like you mentioned, I've been there too at times hard time falling asleep, you get the second wind and sometimes your curve will go up. And then all of a sudden at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, you're wired and you can't fall asleep. Often you'll wake up at two or 3 a.m. because your blood sugar is unstable during the night and you'll be wide awake and you can't get back to sleep. Um, other things are easily overwhelmed. You might crave salt um, because your adrenals help to uh, control mineral corticoids. So they help to balance electrolytes and hydration. And if the adrenals aren't working, you often drink and pee and drink and pee and you can't stay hydrated or you'll crave salt. Um, one other thing common is if you stand up quickly, you'll get dizzy or lightheaded, uh, because it controls the blood pressure. There's more symptoms but that just gives you a, a groundwork because I bet some of you can be like, yep, that's me. That's me. So Jody, what would we do? What is you obviously created some formulas. What would be your top two or three things for adrenals and for the parasympathetic system? First of all, that was the best, most detailed, tiny summary I've ever heard. So Thank go you. you. <laughs> So um, the adrenals are part of the endocrine system. And one of the things that people don't realize is that the endocrine system starts with the hypothalamus. Kind of, my dogs get very- We love sad. dogs, so no problem. <laughs> Sorry. Like, go mom. <laughs> the hypothalamus signals your pituitary to tell your adrenals to release cortisol, right? Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, it's my daughter coming home. Hey, sweetie, I'm recording something. Um, so that signal is kind of a two-way signal that the hypothalamus is sending signals down to your endocrine glands. And then the mm -hmm. endocrine glands are sending the signal back up to the, um, hypothalamus to kind of tell you them, you know, we're good. So we have a blend actually for the hypothalamus because uh, just your phone that can kind of glitch when, you know, too many things are coming in, yeah. the hypothalamus can get out of balance and it's really hard to get remedies into the brain because the blood brain barrier protects mm -hmm. everything that's not super small and fat soluble. So essential oils, that's one reason, you know, people smell things and they say it goes directly to that area. Yeah. Um, I actually like to apply uh, our hypothalamus blend on the third eye. Oh, perfect, right there. Um, yes. And then we have an adrenal blend that I believe works a little bit like um, an adaptogenic herb. I, I feel like it, you know, you mentioned cortisol rhythms you know, it's a little bit like Goldilocks, right? It can be too hot, too cold. You kind of want it to be just right. And at different times of day, it should be high. Cortisol should be high in the morning when you wake up so you have energy mm -hmm. and start to wane down as you go to bed. And sometimes we're completely dysregulated. Yeah. So 
the adrenal blend we put on the low back over the adrenal glands to help, you know, if, if it's too low, it helps bring you up. If it's too high, it helps to calm you down. So it's just a nice sustaining um, remedy during the day. And then my, my favorite approach, you know, stress, there are a lot of pathways for stress in the brain, right? There's the amygdala and the limbic system, the hypothalamus and the endocrine system. And then our nervous system is one of the first responders. Uh, you know, the autonomic nervous system controls automatic functions, breathing, heart rate. And just like your car, it has kind of two speeds. If there is danger, be it, you know, uh, a car changing lanes, a lion chasing you down the street, or you turning on the news and being afraid that, you know, you're in danger. Yeah. Your sympathetic branch of your nervous system, the survival branch kind of goes into dominant, it jumps into action mm -hmm. and resources are allocated towards survival. Blood's routed away from the organs of digestion and detoxification to your arms and limbs so you can run fast. Your, your vision actually changes. Your um, pupils, the black part of your eyes get really big to take in light to make those life or death decisions, but you're really not able to access your stronger problem solving, your prefrontal cortex. So you can't really have a deep thoughtful conversation you know, with someone when their pupils are really large. And then when the danger passes, you regulate, you return to the parasympathetic branch of your nervous system and blood is routed back towards digestion and detoxification, housekeeping kicks in and you start to heal. The challenge, the, this is supposed to be fluid. You're supposed to be both in sympathetic and then toggle back into parasympathetic. But so many of us get stuck in kind of that survival gear and then our delayed maintenance is perpetually delayed and that's when disease can present. So. Um, it's the vagus nerve, the longest nerve in our body that most people have never heard of. Yeah, just one second. My dogs are making a weird noise. Sorry. <laughs> I'm back. Anyway, it's the vagus nerve, cranial nerve number 10, that kind of helps it. You stimulate the vagus nerve and you can activate the parasympathetic nervous system. And there was uh, some research the things that people oh, don't. Sorry, I'm trying to get, I wanted to make sure I'm putting links in our um, chat. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. So, so anyway, when I first started playing with oils and I knew um, from yoga that, you know, you can activate the vagus nerve from deep breathing, splashing your face with cold water, gagging yourself with a tongue depressor. But I also knew that this point kind of right behind the earlobe, that mm -hmm. divot between your earlobe and your um, bone, your mastoid bone, was where the vagus nerve was the most accessible mm -hmm. to the surface. Um, and so there was some research in 2012, a New York neuroscientist named Kevin Tracy was surgically implanting pacemaker-like devices mm -hmm. in that spot. And he was getting a lot of success. The FDA has approved that technique for epilepsy, migraines, and depression. And so when I heard stimulate, something, a light bulb went off because several oils are stimulatory. You know, mm -hmm. you know this, if you were to put it on your, Skin, it might feel hot, it might turn red, peppermint, oregano, thyme, rosemary, those are all stimulatory oils, clove, cinnamon. Mm -hmm. So I started playing with what, what can I use that can stimulate but not burn that actually will you know, get into the skin quickly. So clove is super stimulatory and actually has this constituent eugenol that is, um, it, it's kind of the all-star favorite in terms of what it can do for your body and your nervous system. But it's, it's got kind of big, medium-sized molecules. So when you combine it with lime, you get this combination of stimulatory, gets into the skin quickly and also is less hot. So it doesn't necessarily make you feel red or, or cause irritation. Oh, I love that. Is that in the parasympathetic? Is that the one? Yeah, that, that is, that's the parasympathetic blend. And mm -hmm. what I love about this, I mean, there, there are many remedies. There's GABA, there are a bunch of things that you can take that calm your nervous system, but this feels, it's such a quick, you know, you can do it really quickly. You can carry it in your pocket. Even if you're, you know, in a meeting or at a meal and you feel anxious, it's kind of subtle so that you can regulate yourself without the world necessarily knowing. And I can attest, I have this little darling lavender pouch that I take with me to the coffee shop when I'm writing or working. 
And um, I have your uplift and your attention and your all your focusing focus, all of them. I can never decide which one I like them all. So I kind of sometimes even blend those, but, and this is a whole other topic, but like for when I want to get into writing or whatever, I feel like in the last five years with stress and everything else, my focus isn't quite as crisp. I used to be like a laser focused person. I could get into something and stay there for five hours. And all of a sudden the time was gone. And I feel like focus is harder than it used to be, which is adrenal symptom as well. And so I love love this is a whole nother topic, but I love your oils for focus, um, as well. So like I said, bottom line is I carry them around with me. That's why I wanted to talk to you because I thought, gosh, if these are helping me, there's going to be other people out there who would like to have access to them. They're not that expensive. They're easy to carry. They're just, it's all around. Great. So we talked about parasympathetic. We talked about adrenals, where to put those just quickly on my focus and attention. Can you tell me the difference from how you created the focus, the attention and the, um, the three that I mentioned, and then where you'd put them? Yeah, yeah. So attention was based, it actually was for ADD kids. And it's this idea of grounding that a lot yeah. of times with mm-hmm. ADD, they're so in their head that they can't yes. get into their body. Mm-hmm. And you know, a lot of the grounding herbs like vetiver, the, the herbs are plants that have really deep roots in the earth, mm-hmm. the trees, the cedar, you know, yeah, it was it. a combination of those really grounding herbs that you put on the bottom of the feet. So these kids can feel like they're in their bodies. Yeah. And once Feel, again, that's kind of activating your parasympathetic nervous system. You yeah. feel like, why do you feel safe? Well, so, what's interesting is most of the time people think of attention as lack of brain power. It's always, if we look at an uh, fMRI, it's literally too much activity in the brain. It's not too little. So actually pulling that down and, and allowing less activity, which is what you're like grounding. And I'm just thinking about me when I'm driving, I'm like thinking about a million things. This would be a great formula for me to apply to my feet before I drive. <laughs> right. Smelling it because that's what's so wonderful about plants. They have their own energetic frequency. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily, uh, like this goes back to your intuition point. I give people suggestions, you know, and then you can take that where you want. If, if you're very drawn to put something on your wrist, put yep. it there. You know, the bottom of the feet is just one of many places you can apply it. You can apply it on your tailbone, you can smell it. Um, so that was the principle behind the attention blend. And then the focus blend, and it's really interesting. Um, there, there are so many areas of the brain and it's really the prefrontal cortex that controls the executive function, yes. the ability to plan, to prioritize. And so that's kind of right behind the forehead. Mm-hmm. And you know, your nostrils, no cells are brain cells and they go directly to that area. So just smelling things, there's tons of research on rosemary, mm-hmm. peppermint, you know, yeah. if you're studying vocabulary words and then you smell it again before the test, mm, it has a recall. And that's my favorite because I love peppermint, which makes sense because it's very activating for the brain. And um, so I love that. So let's go. I mentioned before, because I know a lot of our listeners have all of you listening that the mass cell activation. Some of my favorite talks have been around mass cell activation and mold related illness, which triggers mast cells and histamine response and allergies. And that you have a couple formulas, real specific. Let's talk first about the histamine formula. And then I want to talk about the liver gallbladder because that area is so key. Like you said, before we get on here, it doesn't get much respect sometimes, right? Um, when I went to Switzerland, one of the funnest things that I learned, they, they would, we did a lot of work. It was a liver gallbladder detox and they called the liver, the queen, we need to respect the queen. And I love that wording because the liver doesn't get a lot of respect, but it literally is one of the most important organs in our body and the gallbladder is right next to it. And that whole detox pathway. So let's talk about your histamine formula and then about liver gallbladder. Yeah, so the history and formula, there's this one uh, plant, blue tansy, that is exceptionally amazing just for kind of modulating the histamine response. I, I'm very sensitive. I had mold at one point. The house is clean mm-hmm. now. But I can tell, you know, when I walk into a hotel, I'm like, oh, yep. mold here. You know, and I actually have a friend who has to bring her tent because sometimes she just can't sleep in the hotel. But mm-hmm. I found I have a histamine balance that's high in blue tansy. It has a bunch of other herbs. It, it gets me through, you know, like I put it on the back of the neck, behind the ears, the bottom mm-hmm. of the feet. I was at um, a bar mitzvah party recently and they had a smoke machine and the bat mitzvah girl apparently was very sensitive. Her whole face exploded. And her mom was like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, you know what? So we turned off the smoke machine. Uh-huh. We put the Paris or the um, histamine around her neck and she was fine within a matter of minutes. It just mm-hmm. helps the body re, um, it's all about regulation, right? It yeah. just supports a return to balance. Mm-hmm. 
And then gallbladder, you mentioned, like we said before we come on, doesn't get a lot of respect, but you have a gallbladder formula too. And just again, real quick lecture for you guys listening. Gallbladder is your storage organ for bile. Bile holds cholesterol, but it also grabs onto toxins. And our bile circulation in the gut is very, very efficient. So what happens is we circulate it through the bowels. We reabsorb about 95% of it. And we just have this merry-go-round of toxins. So a couple of things for bile are, is if you have poor sluggish bile flow, you will be more toxic. You will potentially get overgrowth of bacteria in the small bowel. So we want bile flow. We want, um, you know, acute, you know, all this pulling out of the toxins. So what do you have for the gallbladder? <laughs> yeah. What I realized is that, um, each organ has its own frequency. This is kind mm -hmm. of a tenets principle as well, but you can, uh, plants and humans are biofamiliar and you can combine the different essences of plants to match the frequency of healthy yeah. organ function. So we have a gallbladder blend that really is, um, helping the gallbladder kind of return to it, its appropriate healthy frequency. Like it, it's slightly complicated, but the way I explain it, like when you're teaching a kid to ride a bike, it's complicated, right? They have their training wheels and they need to figure out how to balance while moving yeah. forward. And some kids get it in two seconds. Some kids take two months. It's kind of just when the body remembers, oh yes, this is what it feels like. And that's what we're trying to do by topically overlaying the healthy frequency of both the liver, which gives it vitality and the gallbladder. It's just another kind of um, training wheel or support. You know, you're taking all the right nutrients and eating the right food internally. And then from the outside in, we're kind of putting the frequency in balance so that the gallbladder can better function and return to, to regulation more quickly. Love that. And you would actually apply a little bit of topically to the right upper quadrant, which is where you're okay. Love exactly. that. Could you do it with do it with castor oil before bed? Is kind that of was, my you read my mind. I was just gonna say, could you do it with castor oil or with a hot a heating pad or something? Yeah, that would probably enhance. I love that. I um, do I tell people actually to combine castor oil, the oil, and then do an Epsom salt bath and use that as the heating. Oh, I love that. So if you don't know about castor oil packs, there's some great resources out there. Um, Queen of Thrones makes ones you can wrap around you. We probably yeah. both know about that because it's sort of like great. messy. Love that stuff. And then um, you can apply that castor oil on top of this oil and get more enhanced. And that will also help that whole axis kind of dump and excrete and get rid of those toxins. And then you want to make sure your bowels are moving because part of the excretion route is through the bowels. Um, and just a tip there, if you have constipation or have struggled with bowel motility, magnesium citrate, simple, easy. You can find it anywhere. It's a real good, gentle bowel mover. Um, so let's talk in our last little bit here about sleep. Sleep is such a, in fact, that's one recently, I have a dear friend who struggled with insomnia for years and tried everything. And I realized as I was just really thinking through, okay, how can I help her? We've tried meds, we've tried herbs, we've tried all kinds of things. And sometimes they'll work for a short period of time, but then um, she would, you know, either become resistant or it stop working. And I really was thinking deeply and intuitively about it. And that's when I was, I think I reached out to you by email and I said, said, what do you have for sleep? Because I realized she's an empath. She's a highly sensitive person. And I thought, I bet essential oils would be gentle enough, yet more effective than what she's tried. And so far she's having great luck. So what would you recommend? Yeah. With sleep for sleep, for someone who's having trouble with sleep. It's funny because I look at sleep as, as four different challenges. And you mentioned one of them, the adrenal blood sugar wake up. So I say, if you're having trouble falling asleep, that is, you know, a cortisol hype, um, melatonin issue. Sometimes when your cortisol is too high, it pushes down your melatonin and it's your pineal gland that releases melatonin. And our poor pineal gland is in the center of the brain and really susceptible to fluoride, to aluminum, to all sorts of toxins. And so it can get a little calcified, you know, just a little compromised. And so the more we can return it to balance. So melatonin is great. And we have a blend called circadian rhythm that I mentioned mm -hmm. I started with it above the ears. And then I realized I put it on the top of the head and the back of the head as well, basically trying to surround the center of the brain without putting it on your face. Cause yeah. if you're a top attorney sleeper, it could get yeah. in your eyes. <laughs> I <not> grow. <laughs> right. So that's my remedy for falling asleep. If you wake up in the middle of the night, because you have a blood sugar dip and there's um, the adrenals kick out too much you know, uh, yeah. energy into the blood, we have one for the pancreas that just helps to um, pull the sugar out of the blood and into the cells. That seems to really help people when they have kind of that blood sugar wake up around 1 a.m. And then if you're waking up around three and maybe you use the bathroom and you're a little groggy, that tends to be when your liver and gallbladder are the most active. 
or your hormones. And so I recommend the liver and gallbladder before bed. You can reapply if you wake up at that time. And that helps people get back to sleep more quickly or even sleep through the night. Wow. I love that because those, again, you and I know why the liver, why the adrenals and all this, but if you're just out there listening, you're like, I can't sleep. You would not necessarily go to the shelf and pick up liver formula. Right. And again, I totally get that. Cause I always ask them if you're waking up, what time is it? And like I said, 2 AM is typically more adrenal access and then 3 AM is more liver detox. So that makes perfect sense. But I love that you mentioned that. And I love circadian rhythm for the, um, now, do you also have one specifically called sleeper insomnia? I thought there was one other one that's a we little, have, we have one called sleep. And here's what's interesting. Right. So the best oils for sleep are uh, valerian root, which smells like stinky feet and yes. hard, which smells slightly better. So the sleep blend was really kind of a more gentle tranquilizer. A lot of people use circadian rhythm and sleep Got together, okay. um, you know, and everyone is like, oh, lavender is the best. Lavender has great research, but what's fascinating is all the research on lavender for sleep is always in combination with other oils. Yeah. Lavender is sedative and it combines really well, especially with citrus. Uh-huh. Citrus is really light and uplifting. So the sleep blend is, is spikenard, lavender, um, some of the citrus blends. It's a really gentle, nice combination. And it's, I, I like it for children because it's yeah. really calming, you know, especially my, my son, um, <laughs> you know, on the 17th book, he still wasn't tired. So yes. <laughs> like, okay, let's get it. I'm sure moms out there are like, okay, I want to try some of that for the kids. Yeah. Than Benadryl, right. You have the moms that like secretly, like I give him some Benadryl. <laughs> like, so. Benadryl made him a more hyper. We yeah. tried that on a red eye since without testing it. That was the longest plane ride of my life. So I bet, yeah. yeah, definitely paradoxical activity for many kids where the, um, anticholinergics, antihistamines are hyperactive. Yeah. They cause this hyperactivity. Um, yeah. Wow, we have been through a lot. Um, one little, this is interesting. So this is just for like smell. What are people? What do people feel like is the best smelling oil that you have? Is there one that just like it's so deliciously smell? You know, honestly, it's it's the small intestine one that I created for um, boundaries. Like I I've really gone down many rabbit holes with Chinese medicine and um, how organs are connected to emotions. Like we have one for lungs for grief, but yeah. the small intestine support smells like heaven to me. And it could be, you know, so many of us women, we're such pleasers. We do yes. everything for everyone else. You know, Reese Witherspoon one time, she's like, I'm eating a bagel. My kid's like, I want the bagel. Oh, you want it here? It's all yours. You know, but I think it's really, it, we we all need to have a little bit more of like, um, I'm going to finish this and then I will get something for you, you know, yes. polite boundaries. So Oh, boundaries are huge. I've done so much work and continue because the same thing, all of again, empath pleaser, all this many men and women out there listening. Probably. I love that. I'm going to have to get that one next from you. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Especially. I, I think it's my, everyone that I've given it to thinks it smells wonderful. And then we also have a heart opening blend that people mm-hmm. really love. Oh, I love that. And that when you mentioned even before yoga, sometimes you use the heart. Yeah, opening. that's my new favorite. I put a little bit on my heart in yoga. And if you think about it, all the downward dog and planking. Yeah. You, you smell it the whole practice, you know, and every time you're like that back then yeah. just helps you. Oh, it smells it. really good. Yeah. Oh, um, so gosh, I could talk to you for hours. The last thing I'm thinking about is just right now, you know, people are coming out of this crazy two years that seems like, you know, just, I was talking to my dentist today. I went to get my teeth cleaned and I said, I can't remember the last time I got x-rays and we realized it was before the pandemic. I said, it, it feels like it's just been yesterday, but it's been that long because this um, pandemic has really made our sense of time kind of warped, right? Because it's like our normal things that um, uh, mark activities and things like through the year, like our vacations and stuff, all those markers have been gone. So for those people listening who are like either overwhelmed or trying to reorient or any um, simple remedies or ideas on overwhelm, fear or stress, and just reorientation to cycles and life and that thoughts on that. That is, I, I, I am anxiety queen. That is my wheelhouse. So I can speak to that with, with two things. Um, one thing that I learned from a functional neurologist, Titus Chu, you know, mm-hmm. there's a whole branch of uh, chiropractic called functional neurology that's looking at the different hemispheres of the brain. Yeah. And he taught me that when I'm having a panic attack or feeling completely overwhelmed, that is my right frontal lobe, right forehead that's overactive. Yeah. And so the way to balance that is to smell anything, anything you have in your house, oh, wow. citrus fruit that you peel, through the left nostril, even though right brain typically controls left body, Uh um, right nostril goes to right brain, left nostril goes to left brain. So literally use your thumb to plug your right nostril, smell anything through the left nostril, usually within three to five 
breaths, you get kind of, you know, like smell sati satiation, you, you feel, you feel it, your hemisphere is balanced and you feel so much better. I, wow. I used to get panic attacks in the supermarket checkout lines and have to like abandon the cart, which is so disappointing. But now um, I, I can tell you, and it's, you know, definitely the more you do it, the results are additive and cumulative. So that helps a lot. And then also um, your parasympathetic nervous system, like the more you can do, you can put oil behind your ear, you can um, use your tongue like a paintbrush and paint the roof of your mouth, you can hum. I actually, for my book, um, boostthebrainbook.com backslash gift, I have 25 ways to activate it, but anything you can do, I think that there's so much that's going on that is outside of our control and that can make us feel overwhelmed or like a victim. But, you know, Holocaust survivor, Viktor Frankl, like to say this between the stimulus and the response, there is a space. And in that space lies our power. And by activating your parasympathetic nervous system, you give yourself that space. You give yourself that pause yes. where you observe whatever you're observing and, and pause before you react. And you get to choose how you react. You get to realize that, you know, you, you can choose to be grateful in any moment in time you can choose to show up as your best self. Like you are in charge of your reaction and that feels very empowering. Wow. Those are some amazing pearls that I think anyone listening at some time in your life could use. <laughs> I love that. I really, really do. Especially the pause. Um, like I said, Jody, we could talk for a long time. I have really enjoyed um, what you've shared. I love what you're doing for the world and bringing this. And um, thank you so much today for taking the time to talk to us. Any laps, last tips or tricks or anything you want to leave with our audience? No, if you're if you're new to oils, literally just go to you know Whole Foods and and just pick one that you like. Most people like orange. Most people like citrus. Just start very small. You can add a few drops to an Epsom salt bath. You don't need to you know if you want pre made formulas, we have them. But if you're just testing the waters, there's no you can't do it wrong. I love that. Cause if you're like me, I'm like, Oh, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to do it wrong. And that was even me with the focus and attention. I'm like, I don't know which one to use, but I'm going to use them all. Yeah. <laughs> so, I love it. Oh, Jody. Um, thanks for what you do in the world. And thank you for your time today. I have really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.